hey guys welcome back to the next video when we are taking everything back to the practical level now in the previous videos we've explained how the all, the whole process of all out is working all the actors what they do how they exchange information what are the different flaws how the tokens are generated just everything on based on theoretical level, how uh, how it's working basically and by now you should know all that if you have misunderstanding, please go and watch the theoretical videos about uh, the whole technology of all the different flaws. And if you still do not uh, understand something or have any questions, feel free to post them below. So uh, now we are taking to the practical level. I'm going to explain here when or basically where or how it is used, how it is used and in the future videos we're gonna see how you can connect to OAuth using different API keys because as I said the OAuth is based on APIs APIs is the thing that basically connects separate parties third parties like you have Facebook and with own database with own servers and you have your application and basically you want to connect your application with the Facebook's database and uh, that's where you use API because Facebook will not give you the, their database, the password for their database, but you can give the server of Facebook token with requesting something from database and they can give you just that record. So you can use this database for generating your users, for sharing photos, for sharing videos, posts, and so on. So this is the whole idea of OAuth and this makes a solution for it. Of course, I'm gonna give more examples, but now let's get into action. So basically where exactly OAuth is used. OAuth basically, as I said, is a communication which is used for transferring information, like through APIs. And it's mainly used basically anywhere. Most of the websites, most of the web applications, mobile applications have an option for connecting with Facebook, connecting with Google, uh, using other stuff like sharing Twitter posts, connecting to Instagram, sharing Instagram posts, and so on. So basically, nowadays, there are a lot of places where you can uh, connect with different services using APIs and OAuth connection. OAuth is mainly used and implemented in web apps and mobile apps. So what I mean by that, most of the web applications have need and mobile application has needs for connecting to services like Facebook, Twitter, and so on. Because these are a huge social platform which arranges a lot of data. They work constantly with a large amount of data. So it's easier for using one Facebook profile and connecting with that profile anywhere possible instead of making, let's say, 10 different profiles for 10 different web applications. That way you have access with the same data with all that services and basically you can connect when you are using uh, one same credentials. So the OAuth is working for that communication between the APIs to be secured. So it's working with the tokens instead of passwords. So the OAuth ensures secure API, API connection and resource drain. So that's why what I'm explaining right now. Basically using OAuth, the only job for using OAuth is to connect and drain resources from a different third party server. Let's say if you want to implement an OAuth uh, functionality on your, basically your web application, you can uh, input different code for front end, make uh, some backend changes, in, you can input different code for backend, uh, basically, functionality, and therefore, using the APIs and the OAuth from the backend, you can connect your application with, let's say, Facebook or Google or Gmail. So, from your application, you can send, receive email, let's say, you can send, receive messages, see photos, and that's all made through APIs. So uh, all this is used for either authenticating yourself or draining resources. So as I said, the OAuth can be used, for example, to log yourself in with a Facebook account, or it can be used for, let's say, uh, draining something or posting something, editing a database record to the main server, but you have access just to that record, your, your own record. 
It can be used for multiple purposes. As I said, with odd connection, you can send and receive emails, you can send and receive photos, messages, you can share posts, delete posts, uh, you can just do multiple, multiple things. Every basically services like Facebook has their own developers portal when and where basically they explain everything you need to know about their APIs and how to work with that APIs. But we're gonna see that in future. So let's uh, skip that for now. And let's talk a little bit about information of OAuth. So see that button right here. You see logging with Facebook. In, on the first end, the, the front end to that button is just a blue screen with the Facebook logo and a Facebook login title something like that so we have front end which represents how we see things by working with the OAuth, you should have some knowledge of programming so we have front end and back end technologies front end is how we see things how they are arranged and structured and the back end is how they work we don't really see visually what is happening but it's working and it's doing some some job so let's say this is a front end we have a button a uh, blue button with a Facebook logo and a title working with Facebook and by clicking that button we on the back end we are starting the whole OAuth procedure so by clicking the login with Facebook button we are authenticating and sending requests to the OAuth server of Facebook and the whole process repeats the next example is let's say the Udemy login page when for example we have continue with Facebook continue with Google and you have a field for manual Udemy account registration. So try to follow the logic in the chain here. When you are connecting with your own Udemy account with email and password, you are working with Udemy's database, right? Because any web app has its own database. But when you are clicking connect with the Facebook, now you're making a request to the Facebook server and the Facebook OAuth server to start the procedure of obtaining tickets and to start draining information from the resource server using that ticket. Because you are not giving the Udemy your password of Facebook, you are giving your password of Facebook to the OAuth server. And the OAuth server is generating a ticket and that ticket is being used for draining resources. In that case, it's draining, it's basically authenticating, not draining, it's basically authenticating yourself with Facebook account. So by having a Facebook account, you can have a Udemy account using the, your Facebook one and the API for Facebook Udemy. So all these connections are made through different APIs. And we have the same thing about, uh, about Google. We have continue with Google. So whenever you click continue with Google, we are engaging with the Google resource server, with the Google database and application, and we are engaging with the OAuth server of Google. So we are not directly touching its database. We are just the whole, the same procedure is being repeated. So we are requesting the, uh, the connection is bringing us back. We input our credential, the token is generated to the application, in that case to Udemy, because in our case, the third party is Udemy. And then the Udemy drains or authenticates ourselves with that token to, with Google, with the API. So just keep the, the logic pretty simple. Of course, this, uh, this basically is, is the, the same principle occurs when you're talking about PayPal. You all know that PayPal is uh, the platform for money transfer. It's global wide. So they still have APIs for that. And their tutorial is pretty simple. You're gonna see that in future. So uh, we still have the same thing. We have a front end button, but in that case, our, our purpose is not to authenticate or not only to authenticate, but to drain resources or to edit resources. So with that ticket, which is being generated by the OAuth uh, PayPal server, we have the permission for basically draining resources or editing resources. In that case, the, the resource is money. So when we're talking about the resources, think of an abstract way. Resources can be anything from money to messages, to photos, to posts, to emails, just resources is just anything. So these are some practical examples of uh, what it looks like. So by clicking the PayPal button, we've been prompted out with the PayPal uh, login form. When we, when we enter the, the login form, the ticket is being generated to, to, to that third party. And therefore, with that ticket, the third party can access the resources. 
So here is again the graph that we saw in the first video. So the idea is really the same, not much of, of a difference. So we have our third, third party. So in that case, it's not a mobile application. It can be, it can be. But in that case, let's say is the Udemy website, which I show right here. So we want to connect with Udemy. So Udemy is a third party because we basically want to authenticate with our Google resources, with Google ID, but we are authenticated on, with Google on that Udemy website. So Udemy is working as a third party right now. Right, so Udemy is that third party. So uh, upon we click continue with Google, we are sending as a user from the from Udemy, we are sending a request to the OAuth server, this right here. Therefore, the OAuth server asks us, so we are connecting either with the Facebook or with the Google OAuth server. Because we see we have two options, we have continue with Facebook, continue with Google. So the graph is gonna be different because we have two odd servers, two resources servers, two resources, one user and one client. So whenever you click one of these can continue with Facebook or Google, no matter which one, we are connecting to the odd server of that specific service. So in that case, if I click continue with Facebook, I'm gonna basically make a request from Udemy to the Facebook odd server. And then the Facebook odd server is gonna send the request to me through a web browser to enter my credentials for Facebook. And after I enter my credentials, they are stored here. Here they are being checked from the resource server if they are correct. So, or or even they, they, there is a database on the auth server itself. So especially for credentials and for the API, I'm not sure how they implemented that. So whenever I put my credentials, they're being held here on the OAuth server. Then the OAuth server checks the credentials, see if they are right, correct, and the same basically, the one of the database and the one that I've inputted, and then generates a ticket to the Udemy. And then Udemy with that ticket makes a reference to the resource server. The resource server takes that uh, ticket and basically asks the odd server for that ticket validation. Because ticket may be expired, maybe from someone else, maybe stolen and so on. So the old server says, okay, the ticket is great. The ticket is the one that I've generated just now. You can continue. And then we authenticate as Udemy with, with our Facebook profile. The same procedure occurs when we uh, choose Google. The same procedure occurs if there are option for Twitter login, Instagram login, basically anything that involves third party. Any application that involves third party is using that OAuth communication and using ticketing system for obtaining access or draining resources. Uh, so guys, the same principle applies in, even into PayPal, but uh, then instead of uh, just authenticating, we are having uh, data editing. So guys, uh, this is all I wanted to say now. And in the future videos, we're going to see some examples of how can you connect and use that APIs. So thank you everyone for watching.